just about ready to start and welcome this is four o'clock fairy and folk tales with miss b my name is miss b thank you so much for joining us we're just going to have a couple quick stories today and um, we're going to start with one that your grown-ups may already know your parents may know this even your grandparents may know this book this book is called caps for sale by Esvir Slobodkina. It was published about 70 years ago for the first time, this version. Caps for sale. I think from the picture on the cover you can get an idea. It has to do with somebody up a tree, which is kind of unusual to start with. Caps for sale, a tale of a peddler or a salesman, some monkeys, and the monkey business. And we are reading this thanks to HarperCollins Children's. Once there was a peddler or a salesman who sold caps, but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First he had on his own checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and at the very top, a bunch of red caps. He walked up and down the streets holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. As he went along, he called, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. You can tell this is a long time ago, right? That's pretty cheap for a half. One morning, he didn't sell any caps. He walked up and down the street, and he walked, he walked up the street, and he walked down the street calling, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. Nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. Think I'll take a walk in the country, he said. And he walked out of town slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. Upset not meaning to hurt their feelings, but upset to knock over. He walked for a long time till he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place to rest, thought he, and he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put his hands up to feel if they were straight, first his own checkered cap, then gray caps, then brown caps, then blue caps, and at the very top, the red caps. They were all there. So he went to sleep and he slept for a long time. <sighs> when he woke up, he felt refreshed and rested. Uh-oh, you can tell something's wrong. But before standing up, he felt with his hands to make sure his caps were in the right place and, oh no, all he felt was his own checked cap. He looked to the right of him, no caps. He looked to the left of him, no caps. He looked in back of him, no caps. He looked behind the tree, no caps. What could have happened? Then he looked up in the tree. And do you know what he saw? On every branch was a monkey. And every monkey had a gray or a brown or a blue or a red cap. They took all his caps. The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do, so finally he talked to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. Shake, shake, shake. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys just shook their fingers back at him and said, tee, tee, tee. 
This made the peddler angry, so he shook both hands at them and said, You monkeys, you! You give me back my caps! But the monkeys only shook their hands and looked at him and said, Tick, 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 tick. Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot and he said, You monkeys, you! You better give me back my caps! But the monkeys only stamped their feet back, feet back at him and said, tick, tick, tick. By this time, the peddler was really angry. He stamped both his feet and shouted, You monkeys, you must give me back my caps! Do you think they did? But the monkeys only stamped both their feet and stared back at him and said, tick, tick, tick. At last, he became so frustrated that he pulled off his own cap and threw it on the ground and began to walk away. But then, each monkey pulled off their cap. All the gray caps, all the brown caps, all the blue caps, all the red caps, they all came flying down out of the tree. So the peddler picked up the caps and put them back on his head. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and at the very top, the red caps. Let's see if he's got them all in order again. And slowly, slowly, he walked back to town calling, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. The end. And that's the end of Caps for Sale. This version by Esfer Slobodkina from about 70 years ago. This story is pretty familiar to a lot of us and even, like I said, to your parents, to your grandparents, maybe even great grandparents know this story because it's been around for a long time. But this story, this author, she did not invent this story all by herself. This is adapted from a folk tale from far away, meaning that the story itself has been told over and over and over and over again in different versions. So we're going to share another version of this. This is The Hat Seller and the Monkeys, and this version is told by Baba Wagu Diakati, Diakite, Diakite. And this is being shared thanks to Scholastic Booksellers. Now, when we read this, you might be surprised at some of the things you see that are the same and some of the things you see that are different. Right from the first picture, you can tell those hats are quite different than his caps. But I do see something similar, and that is that all the hats are stacked up. So, let's see. This is The Hat Seller and the Monkeys by Baba Wagui Tiakite. Bamusa the hat seller was a joyful man. He traveled from town to town selling hats which he piled high on his head. Ai manuni gongarisa, he sang, which means what a wonderful business hat selling is. Ever since he was a little boy, Bamusa made and sold hats. His grandparents and his own parents were hat makers. They taught him to do this at a very young age. After each harvest, the whole family would venture out to the fields to collect rice stalks from which they made the wide brim Dibiri hats to sell. During the rainy season, they embroidered close fitting Fugulan caps with intricate patterns of brightly colored threads. You see them working hard there. Through his joyful spirit and his hard work, Bamusa had become very well known in the neighboring towns. Whenever he arrived with his hats piled high on his head, children would follow him and sing along as he sang his favorite song. I'm a no ni kong ka di sa, 
I'm a no ni con carisa. I'm a no ni ni con carisa. And that, remember, that means, oh, what a wonderful life it is to be selling hats. And this is the story of how Bamusa learned an important secret to the success of selling. One day, Bamusa heard that a great festival was going to take place in a neighboring town, and he could sell more hats there than ever before. So he spent many days making hats for this event. To get to the festival, he had to travel very far. So he began his journey early in the morning, but he was in such a hurry, he did not eat any breakfast. And halfway to town, Bamusa grew so tired and hungry, he had to stop and rest under a shady mango tree. He unloaded the hats from the top of his head and put them on the ground next to him. Then he covered his face with one as a shade to keep the sun from his eyes. But Musa soon fell asleep and began to snore loudly. <coughs> Little did Bamusa know that the fruit from this tree attracted monkeys. Bamusa's snoring alerted them to the company. Can you see the little monkeys up there in the tree? Did you even notice them at first? They blend in pretty well. As usual, monkeys are very curious and very smart, and they crept down from the tree. Yoli, 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 quietly, quietly, quietly. And they sneaked around Bamusa. They were attracted to the colorful hats and each monkey selected one. Then they climbed back up the tree and imitated Bamusa, covering their face and pretending to snore. Soon, Bamusa woke from his sleep, rested but hungry. Eager to continue his journey, he looked for his hats. But where were they? Had they been stolen? Frantically, Bamusa called for help. Ay manun, ay manin, ay manin. It's kind of the same way he started his song. It's a way of saying, oh boy, either like you're happy, oh boy, this is great. Ay manunin con tadisa. Oh boy, this is great life to sell hats. Or if something bad's happening, I manin, I manin. Oh boy, this is rotten. So he's hoping somebody can help him. When the monkeys heard this, they answered him. <laughs> Bamusa looked up and realized what had happened. He was so hungry, he could not cl think clearly what to do. He raised his arms in the air. Chut, 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 he yelled. So the monkey stared down at him and replied. You know what they did? Hoop, 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 shaking their arms wildly too. Bamusa threw a dead branch at them, hoping to scare them off. But the monkeys merely threw leaves back at him. Then... Bamusa picked up a stone and threw it up into the tree. The monkeys picked up mangoes and threw them back down at Bamusa. By this time, Bamusa was so hungry, he had collected the fruit and sat down to eat. He ate until his stomach was full. Now Bamusa could think clearly. Now he knew what to do. He removed the only hat left on his head and shook it up in the air at the monkey, shouting, I money, I money. And the monkeys did the same, grabbing their hats off their heads and howling, Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Bamusa dropped his hat to the ground, and all the monkeys dropped their hats too. Without losing a second, Bamusa collected all his hats, stacked them back on top of his head, and rushed to his destination. He arrived not a moment too soon. Remember, he was going to the festival to sell a lot of hats. So great was Bamusa's happiness from his recent luck that his spirit of goodwill helped sell all of his hats. And so it was that Bamusa learned from the monkeys, it is with a full stomach that one thinks best. 
for an empty satchel cannot stand. Meaning if you have nothing inside, you're not gonna be able to make good choices or do anything. And that is the story of The Hat Seller and the Monkeys as retold by Baba Wagui Tiakite. Now, you probably could tell some things were very similar in these stories. They both had hat sellers. They both had monkeys. They both showed how the monkeys were imitating the peddler or the salesperson. And it showed how after thinking about it, the hat seller cleverly used the monkey's imitation to get his hats back. These retellings are from countries pretty far apart. So how did they get from one to the other? Well, uh, folk tales like this are told in families. They're told at gatherings. And then when one family goes to another area, they tell the story to their new friends and new families. That family might move and hear a story again. And it spreads and spreads and spreads and spreads. And that's how we get a lot of our folk tales and fairy tales throughout the world. So anytime you hear a good story, a good old story, maybe they might even have another version that's even older. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, my name is Miss B from the Brandywine 100 Library. Please like and follow us on Facebook. You can join us here at 4 o'clock on Wednesdays and Fridays for 4 o'clock fairy tales, folk tales, myths, and legends. Also, we have morning music on Mondays and Thursday mornings at 8.30 a.m. Lots of other events. Please check out our Facebook page. Thanks. Have a wonderful afternoon.